Yes, uh, we have today our carcinoma tongue case and we are going to treat uh, to control the volumes for carcinoma tongue and a patient has underwent uh, wide local excision with flap reconstruction so you can see this is the uh, flap reconstructed structure this uh, hyper dense or blackish area so this is the flap of the tongue which has been placed so this is a carcinoma tongue of the left side and the patient has underwent wide local excision with lymph node dissection and after that uh, the patient has uh, done flap reconstruction of the tongue so this is the flap in this patient the flap has been uh, taken from the gastrocnemius muscle of the uh, right uh, leg so uh, how we treat it the patient was in a stage of uh, pathological stage of t3 and there were epsilateral two limb nodes positive so we said we said it is fpt3 n1 m0 so there were no lung mats or uh, any distant mats so it is a pt3 n1 m0 case so the patient needs uh, adjoint um, sib imrt simultaneous integrated boost to i am integrated uh, um, intensity modulated radiation therapy so is this we are today we are going to uh, draw the sib imrt for a squamous cell carcinoma tongue in a pt3 n1 m0 so so this is the uh, preformed body or skin of this patient which has been controlled already now the next thing we have to control is the uh, ctv so this is the ctv we have drawn for this patient so this is the ctv of the tongue you can see uh, it, it it includes the tongue where the uh, area at risk patient is at risk of developing tumor and this it, it includes the flap as well as the normal side we take it in the ctv right so this is the ctv and it includes all of the tongue <clears throat> then we take the uh, ctv nodal of this so we we you we have drawn if there is a uh, uh, one side uh, one limb node positive on a single ipsilateral side so we take the single side limb node uh, to be controlled so the, we have drawn the in this patient we have drawn the uh, 2a 2b 3a and the group 4 limb nodes right so this patient uh, up to uh, on the same side the patient was having uh, left sided uh, squamous cell cancer so we have drawn the uh, uh, ipsilateral limb nodes of uh, from class 1 into class 4 so you can see this is the class 4 limb, limb nodes right so this is the ctv nodal of this patient having uh, ipsilateral limb nodes drawn what is this this is the class 1 a limb nodes right uh, submental limb nodes right on the in this squamous cell carcinoma time so this is the ctv and and 60 the ctv and 60 the 60 mean that this patient will receive 60 grays of the radiation therapy into this uh, nodal area as well because there was one limb node positive so the, we need to to radiate <coughs> now from one into four all of the class of limb nodes right so then we have this uh, the ptv nodal around the ct this is the planning tumor volume so this we have taken it uh, uh, 0 0.7 millimeter uh, a margin to the ctv nodal and then after that you can see this is in the ctv of the ptv to the ctv nodal so we have interpolated that now after that once the ctv uh, of the tongue has been drawn then we have given the uh, ptv 
66 what is this uh, PTV 66 so it is this uh, SIB part this simultaneous integrated boost part to this uh, area in the middle so it is the mid zone of the uh, flap reconstructed area and the normal side of the tongue and so it is this area is highly at risk of recurrence so we give the <coughs> we have we given we have drawn the structure as a uh, ptv 66 this is the structure so it is this ptv 66 and this area is going to receive the maximum dose of the radiation uh, 66 gram why because it, it is this area where the recurrence rate is most likely high so we have given this area as a maximum dose of radiation right so then this is the uh, ptv of this uh, ptv of this city so we have given a uh, seven millimeter uh, margin to this area as well now after that once we have drawn the structures then we have, we have uh, drawn the uh, nodal structure as well you can see this is the axial wave so far we have drawn the uh, ptv 66 to this is the ptv 66 uh, simultaneous integrated boost area then we have this the ctv 60 then the uh, ptv of this 60 then we have the ctv nodal this is the nodal area right the class uh, one to fourth of the left side so group one to four of the left sided of the limb node so we have drawn this is this is a class one a one b two a three and up to the fourth limb node in in front of this higher bone this is the group four limb nodes right so we have drawn this limb nodes along with their ctv nodal so far <coughs> then we have now what we need to draw other structure so other structure at, uh, after these uh, PTV and CTV nodal uh, with SIB are uh, organ trace. So, what are other organ trace? Now, the first uh, thing come into our mind once you are going to give radiation from different direction, like from posterior directions, from interior, and from this direction. So, the brain stem is a trace. So, first we have drawn the um, brain stem and its prv structure so this is the brain stem we have drawn we can see it in this view as well so this is the brain stem right so the brain stem we have drawn and this brain stem from where this brain stem starts it it, it starts from this fissure shape, shape structure is seen here in this area so you can see if i would make it a bit white you can see this this area so below this uh, one or two slides below there uh, began it began there is a brain stem so we have drawn this the um, uh, a brain stem and it's uh, the yellow color is the prv so the prv is 0 uh, 0.5 centimeter of uh, 5 millimeter uh, margin to the brain stem so this is the brain stem it extends into the uh, spinal cord or the um, first uh, cervical vertebra so this is the first cervical vertebra or the odontoid process of the second or the atlas and axis now so this is after that we have drawn the spinal cord so this is the other spinal cord and its spinal cord prv so you can see this yellow structure below is the spinal cord and its prv so after that we have drawn the spinal cord and then uh, you can see a uh, spinal cord along with its so this is the spinal cord after that we have drawn what else we have drawn this uh, the esophagus as well the esophagus at this area so this is the esophagus you will see one minute uh, just posterior to the trachea and anterior to the vertebral bodies so this structure you see this this structure this is the esophagus having no air at this point 
and when a person is swallowing or taking food this is having air maybe it is due to the peristalsis so this structure air containing um, small structure and this is the esophagus just posterior and to the left of this patient so this is the esophagus going into the stomach so this is the esophagus which is also organ at risk for us now we have drawn the larynx the larynx uh, begins from the uh, laryngopharynx so here you can see this is the larynx of this patient we have drawn why it's important because it is the sound box for the patient so you can see this 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 epiglottis the vocal cords the uh, and the larynx so right so we have drawn this the larynx and after that you can see other structure of this like of this in this patient we have drawn the lips so these are the lips we have drawn so far and you can see these are the lips and uh, it is also organic risk with us for this venous carcinoma tongue because we are uh, if we are giving radiation from the interior so the lips are is uh, are also organs at risk so we have drawn the lips as well so apart from that we have drawn the mandible the mandible this structure we start from the temporal mandibular joint this the um, posterior arm of the mandible and you see uh, then this is the left blade of the mandible the right blade of mandible then this is the body and ramus of the mandible the angle of the mandible the uh, alveolar socket for tooth and this is the body angle of the mandible so this is the mandible we have drawn so far after that we have drawn the parotids the parotids are the structure we will see yeah are these structures so these are purple looking structure this is the <coughs> parotid gland for this patient which is uh, external to the uh, uh, ramus of mandible right so the angle of mandible are the ramus of mandible so this is the left parotid gland and the right parotid gland so we have drawn here you can trace it this our bilateral parotid gland of this patient the internal lobe and external lobe of the parotid gland so this is also the major organ at risk with the oral cavity cancers then we have got the thyroid thyroid is also a very important endocrine organ for us so it is just anterior into the trachea the <coughs> thyroid cartilage so this is the thyroid the left lobe the right lobe and the isthmus of the thyroid so you can see this is the thyroid lobe so here here you can trace the thyroid lobe you can look at the thyroid lobe so this is the thyroid lobe as well so here you can see this bilateral looking structure by lobar structure in front of the trachea we have drawn the thyroid lobe as well so after that uh, we have got it tra tmj joint left and right so we have drawn the tmjs at this point right so this this is the tmj this is the tmj so you can see a very fine differentiation between this is the uh, mandibular part and this is the temporal part of the TMJ this is the temporal this is the temporal mandibular joint for this patient right so this is the TMJ right TMJ and the left TMJ so here we have to care for few things uh, especially like um, if the per person has underwent uh, surgery followed by flap reconstruction so we have we are in need to give simultaneous integrated boost boost to the 
and flap and the normal structure the mid zone of this uh, area which is the highest organ area at risk and then the second thing we need to uh, important is to see for the limb nodes if there is a single limb node involved on the ipsilateral side so then we are in need to give uh, uh, radiation therapy of 60 grays um, into the um, all of the limb nodes uh, all four classes of the limb nodes to reduce the risk of future recurrence in this patient and along with that we need to counsel the patient for the possible side effects of the radiation therapy just like dryness of the mouth uh, mucositis erythema and <coughs> anorexia decreased food intake and uh, trismus which is the most important side effect here so we also need to um, ask the patient to, that there is a risk of developing fibrosis of the muscles of the face especially on the left side so it, the patient will be having a bit hardening of these uh, muscles especially these muscles the buccinator the uh, mesiter the lateral pterygoids the medial pterygoids and its tendons so if there is a hardening of these facial muscles and muscle obmistication so the patient is at risk of developing uh, trismus and along with the hardening of the temporum and dubular joint so once the patient will be having a little bit of difficulty in opening the mouth right so the patient is at risk of developing Christmas as well so these are uh, today's lesson so we need to encourage the patient for uh, taking a uh, lot of proteinaceous food especially uh, our teacher dr. Muhammad Farooq advises the patient to take uh, two boiled eggs along with uh, morning and evening time two kebabs uh, and um, uh, the patient is allowed to take fish uh, etc and lobia pulses and dal etc so to have a rich supply of the protein and second the patient is allowed to uh, not allowed to take uh, uh, to do smoking or naswar abuse or pan chillum alcohol and something like uh, uh, these things the patient is uh, never allowed to use uh, to do drug abuse after these to reduce the risk of recurrences and also less intake of carbohydrates and fats because obesity also increases the risk for these cancers as well so today this was all about thank you so much